<laughs> so I think about this one. Hey, how's it going? This is Rory from Rate My Funeral. That was Rate, by the way. So welcome along to a tech review. This is a really exciting one. Now you may have seen I did a review of the Steady Tech Mini. This was a small printer that was sent to me by Box.co.uk and it was great little printer, like really impressive for such a small little thing. Now, the people at Box.co.uk have contacted me again and said, would you like to have a play with the Flashforge Guider 2? It is quite a big printer, they said. I have to admit, I did not expect something quite this big, but wow, the box that it has come in is absolutely huge. So this is really exciting. So. Big, big thanks to Box.co.uk. If you haven't, check out their website. They sell all sorts of things from gaming laptops, PCs, TVs, even dishwashers. They sell a ton of really neat stuff, so do check out their website. And once again, thanks very much for sending me this. I'm really excited. So now I've just got to get it out of the box, and I think to do that, let's do a montage. <laughs> Right, so I've got it out of the box and it is really well packaged. It is a monster. It is an absolute beast. Quick bit of history, my first ever 3D printer was actually a Flashforge Finder, uh, which is like the little red version of one of these and it was a brilliant starter printer. I absolutely loved it to get started, learning about how it all works and everything, because there's not too much tinkering, it kind of works out of the box. I'm expecting the same kind of thing from this, but just with a much, much bigger print bed. There's lots of gear inside it. Let's lift out this. So we have power cable. There's lots of sticky on this, this door. It's gonna have to come off. <laughs> I guess it's the lead. So I'll just point out, I don't actually know too much about this printer yet, but I kind of like to go in a little bit blind when I'm going to review something like this, so I don't like to find out too much. And this is the lid, and it's got more sticking on it, so that's going to have to come off. Wow. Being overtaken by stacks at the moment. There we go. that out of the way for a minute. So take a quick look in the box, what we get with it as well. We get a roll of PLA filament. Nice, okay, so we've got a bunch of white PLA. We also have some tools, a tube, a filament holder, some glue, and a USB cable. Okay, we have some more foam in here underneath this print bed. And I don't know how I'm gonna get that out of it. So I think I'm gonna to have to actually power it up and raise the bed to get this foam out of the bottom. I'm not quite sure. First glance inside, it looks really cool in there. Right, so now we have it out of its box. I think I'm gonna to have to actually power it on and raise the bed to get this stuff out because that's pretty well underneath there, unless I'm missing something. There's a few clips in here just to hold the belt in place, which I imagine is just for transport, so I will, I would say actually 100% is just for transport, otherwise the belt's not gonna do a lot with these on. But I'll just pop these off. These little clippy clips. There's two of those, three of those which are just holding the, the belts in place. So also I have here a manual, or at least a quick start guide, so I'm gonna check this out now. Sure enough, I was right. If you, can, if you look here in the manual, it actually says to load it up, use the Z operation, and raise the bed so you can pull these out. I was right, see, see, see? It's really hot in here, and I can't turn on my aircon because otherwise you'll get wind noises in the audio. 
It's annoying. Let's get it powered up then. Only joking. <laughs> it plays a funny tune when you turn it on. <laughs> okay, as per the manual, I'll do exactly as it says. So I'm going to come into Tools. I'm going to press Manual. And I'm going to press Z minus. Oh, I like that sound. It goes zzz. I need to get a close up. <laughs> How cool is that? I can now remove these. Might need to move it a bit further. Hurrah! Just sending it home. So she's now fully unpacked and she's ready to go, I guess. That was really easy. Compared to the seven or eight hours it took me to set up my Prusa, that was uh, pretty good, really. I still can't go over the size of this thing. It's so big. There's not a lot of really to say about the outside. It's a, it's contained, it's got a lid, so therefore you can print enclosed, you can print ABS. And I expect there are other materials as well. As I say, I haven't double checked everything yet, but yeah, it looks, it looks really cool. I mean, it's, it feels like quite nice quality. Uh, it's, pretty solid, it's pretty robust, the interior looks really good. So it's worth pointing out over here on the side there is a big note that says when printing with PLA please remove the lid, open the front door. And over this side we've got scan QR codes for YouTube tutorials, pretty useful. So I've just got to attach the real holder and the little tube for the filament. The print bed on it, I should mention the size, because obviously that's the benefit of this one. So the build volume of this thing is 28 centimeters by 25 by 30. So that's pretty big build volume. So you can print some fairly decent sized stuff on this. And it's got an auto bed leveling system, so we'll have a look at that. And we'll also go ahead and upgrade the firmware to make sure we're on the latest, and then we're gonna do a test print. But, I'm running out of space and I can't have it here on my desk like this, so I'm going to have to quickly build myself a new little table which is going to sit on in the corner of the room down there, and then it can sit and do its thing. I feel another montage. simplest piece of IKEA furniture to put together. Yes, I said IKEA. It's super cheap, so it's uh, about five or six pounds each. So I got a couple before and I started building the enclosure, but then I decided that I preferred my printer on the top and my filament can live in the bottom. Don't give me a hard time about my filament storage. I don't care, it works. Just leave it, all right? So now the printer has a home, I'm gonna get it on here. We'll get the firmware updated and have a little play. I'm just about to plug this in and I have spotted that it's got a few extra connectors on it. We've got the one for our USB. No problem. USB so that we can put a USB stick in with our models and a network so maybe we can send stuff directly. Interesting. So we attach the small holder onto the back for the reel, put this little tube into here, and then the other end goes into the print head. Now we attach the filament reel onto the spool holder and feed it up through this tube. If we keep feeding through, we should see it come out of the end of the tube, and then we can put that into the print head just have to push down on this little button here to open up the feeders and then that's ready to be loaded in through the load filament option. 
So let's just have a super quick look through the menu that we get on here. This is pretty much the same as my old Flash Forge Finder though, as I remember it. We have a filament option so that we can load and unload the filament. Uh, level, so this is for leveling the bed. Home sends the bed and the print head back to their standard place. Manual, so that we can move uh, it around. Settings, so we've got uh, resume print, so I didn't even know it did that. So I guess if it loses power and you have this on, when it gets power again, it continues printing. Wi-Fi, again, I wasn't even aware it had Wi-Fi. Check servo, so various different options in there. And a factory reset and an update, so we'll come back to that in a minute. Status, so this gives us our current status, so that's the temperature of our platform and the temperature of our extruder. And the about gives us some information about this particular printer. Excellent. So let's have a look in settings and go to update. Oh, no, what have I just done? Oh, cancel. Okay, and now we'll select update. Poor network, please check network and try again. Okay, let's go back. So, we're gonna try and figure out how to update the firmware. Well, I discovered that to upgrade the firmware, I believe you do have to connect to the Wi-Fi first. So, there we go, I've connected to the Wi-Fi. It's now just asked me if I want to install the new version, so I'll say yes. New firmware, yes. Right, that's doing its thing. It just went off, but okay. We'll let that do its thing, and then we'll come back and have a look. Okay, it's finished, and it's saying, please reboot. So I guess by that, it means switch it off and on again. Right, okay, that's back up and running again. So the next thing to do is get this bed level. So I'm gonna start off by raising it. And it's got little twisty knobs. It's kind of hard for me to show you, so please just take my word for it. There are twisty knobs under here and here. So we'll come back and we'll go level. Oh, it's going to do it for me anyway, look. <laughs> so it's now moving the bed back down, as if to say, don't try and make it up like you know what you're doing. We know what we're doing, it's fine. And now the bed's on its way back up again. Okay, good, grand. In fairness, this is not in a hurry to get to the top. But it's got quite a long way to go. Thank goodness for editing, that actually took a really long time. So, it's now saying, screw the three nuts under the platform until they are tight. So yeah, this is exactly like it used to be on my old uh, Flash Forge. Yep, they are all tight, so that's good. So we'll press OK. OK. Turn all three nuts under the platform equally until you hear the beep. <laughs> this is quite tricky to do this. What, what I believe is equally. Oh. Tap verify. Okay. Okay, tap okay to move to the next point. All right. Okay, it's happy now. It's gonna to go to the back center. Okay, level complete. Okay, so it says that the leveling is all finished and done. Just a quick note to clarify the timings there. Obviously, I edited it in the video just so that it didn't take quite so long, but the overall time to level the bed was somewhere around about four or five minutes total. Okay, so you join me over here on the FlashForge website, and I've gone to the download center, and I'm just gonna download FlashPrint, uh, and I'm gonna grab the Windows 64 version of 4.2.0. And I'm gonna go ahead and install this.
So it's now installing the device driver for the printer. That's all good. So we can tell it to launch. And we want to select the guider 2. There we go. And boom, there we go. We now have that is our print area. Okay, so now that we have flash print installed, we're pretty much ready to get going. So let's go with the absolute classic, everyone prints one. I'm gonna hit repair model. Uh, a good old fashioned Benchy. Now what I love is how small that looks in that massive print bed. But right now I just want a quick test just to see how, you know, how good the printer is. We cannot go wrong with a quick Benchy. I can move it around with these controls over here. I can rotate it if I wanted to. I can change the scale. I can make it bigger or smaller. So, I mean, it would be quite fun to do an enormous Benchy, right? Um, so do a Benchy that's the whole size that. That would be massive. Uh, but I'll just stick with a standard small one. The only thing I will do is I'll just move to the front so that the camera picks it up a little bit better. I hope anyway, at least I'm guessing at this stage. Also another button here is cut. So I could actually slice this in two and print it in two separate halves or whatever. Very useful feature uh, if you need to split a model for whatever reason. So quite nice. Right, anyway, so print. And now I can come in here. Something I did do was I went into preferences and I changed under here for printing window type from basic to expert. Basic gives you a really straightforward bunch of settings when you press print. Expert gives you a lot more. Now I don't want to change it all, but I like to kind of have it available. Some profiles, so we've got PLA, ABS, conductive PLA and flexible filament. So they're like a TPU or something. In this case, I'm just going to use PLA. We've then got the quality, so standard, high, hyper and so on this is your heights and i guess if we go to low that's yeah that's 30 so that's your draft quality and then high will be your 12s yeah so all pretty much standard stuff you can tweak the speeds and everything here as well perimeter so that's that's all the around the edges sort of how many lines around the edges of the model infill so what kind of infill you've got hexagon line triangles all the basic standard stuff it's all grand we're not going to use supports. I haven't generated any supports. I'm not going to worry about a raft. And all of this, to be fair, all of this is absolutely fine as it is. I'm just going to leave it. I'm just going to select the PLA and standard. And then I'm going to press OK. Now I just need to save my file somewhere. So I'll just save it into this folder. That's fine, whatever. And that has now sliced up my model. So here we can now have a look and we can slide this down and we can see that's how it sliced it and that's how it will print. It's saying it should take about one hour, 15 minutes. That will be interesting to see if it is accurate. On my old Flash Forge, it was around about 15% uh, more. So I would expect that to take around about an hour and a half on the old one. So we'll see um, how long this actually takes. So send G-code, I'm gonna hit that button in just a minute, because first I wanna put a bit of glue on the print bed. I'm just gonna put a very thin layer of this glue that comes with the printer on the print bed here, and that should be just enough for the first layer to stick. Now I'm gonna come back to here and hit send G-code. It'll ask me which printer, I'm gonna to send to that one. So connect to that one and boom there it goes
Okay, well there we go. We have successfully 3D printed a Benchy. Now bearing in mind, this is a stress test model. This has come out really well. You can see here that the lines are all pretty clean, the overhangs, the arches have all worked, the circles. It's all brilliant. I, I, I'm honestly, I'm really impressed with how well this has come out considering all I did was unpack the printer, plug it in, put a bit of glue on it, load some filament in and send it in and that was it and I now have that. Took an hour and 22 minutes, now that's only seven minutes more than the Flashforge software thought it was going to take so that's pretty good. Overall I'm pretty impressed. Now the one thing though to bear in mind here is this is a 3D printer. In the 3D printing world it's all made up of balancers and compromisers so therefore not everything will always be perfect. Let's look at five things that I don't like about this printer. The little touchscreen is great, but it's an absolute magnet for fingerprints and dirtiness. If you don't like fingerprints on screens, you will be forever trying to clean this off. As with many of this type of printer, it suffers from noisy fanitis. It is quite loud, and when it's printing, pardon, and when it's printing, you hear a lot. Maybe I'm spoiled with my Prusa that is close to silent when it's going, but this thing is pretty loud. Another thing where maybe I'm spoiled from my Prusa, but it doesn't have a removable print bed. So therefore you're stuck with this sticker that's on here. You have to use glue. You can take the sticker off and make it just the glass. And that works pretty well. But after using the steel spring sheet from the Prusa, I do not get why you would still use a fixed system where you have to scrape stuff off. The printer itself is huge. At the end of the day, yes, I know it's got this nice big print bed, but it is a big printer. It takes up a lot of space. It has a big footprint. So therefore, justifying this space to keep this is always gonna be quite tricky in a consumer market. To give you an idea, I can actually fit the Steadytech Mini, which is the printer I previously reviewed, inside this printer. It's big, right? We get this fact. But look how slow everything moves when I'm waiting for my print bed to move around. It takes forever. But don't panic, it's not all terrible. Let's balance this out with five things that I really do like about this printer. I really like the fact that I took this out of a box and then within minutes, I'm up and running and I'm printing. That is a brilliant thing. The UI on this little touchscreen is actually brilliant. It's very simple to use, it's pretty responsive, and it does everything I need it to do straight from the panel here. The fact that it's enclosed, comes with this lid, and you can shut the door, means that you have a really good chance of doing successful ABS printing. Plus, it also can help deaden the sound a little bit. The filament loading and unloading is incredibly easy. We simply select filament and we choose to load or unload. If I unload, it heats up the print head and then we're ready to eject the filament. Although well, let me give you a tip with these printers. Never use the unload option. Always use load, but just simply come up here and snip it. Level with the print head and then press load. That will then start pulling that through. Then just follow it with the filament already loaded in your tube. Once you can feel that it's taken over, just pop your plastic in and that's it, you're done. It uses a tiny little bit more filament, but it reduces the chance of getting a clog. The FlashForge software is really easy to use and actually quite powerful. Plus, you have the added benefit that once it's installed, you will actually get proper thumbnails for your models inside of Windows Explorer. So there you have it. For the price, I would recommend it. If you want a printer with a big bed that is super easy to use, it does seem great. But I would definitely add, you do need the space to keep this thing somewhere. It is a big thing. <laughs> so you need somewhere that this is gonna be able to stay where it's not gonna be in the way of everything. Once again, I would just like to say thank you very, very much to box.co.uk for sending me this printer to have a look at. I'm really grateful. I will be revisiting this printer to have a look and see what we can do with it. Maybe I'll do a project or something. Definitely something interesting. If you'd be interested in that, do please hit that subscribe button. And if you hit the little notification bell, you'll be told when that video comes out. So once again, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.